Welcome to our virtual tour of the North Somerset Studies Library. If you enter the Town Hall into the Western Library, you follow a route across the map, you'll find your way there. As the map shows, the area covers up to the Severn in Bristol, across to Bath and North East Somerset and down to the River Axe. You pass the lending collection of local history material as you make your way to the door of the Frederick Wood Room. Closing is open to everybody. We just ask well, pre pandemic, you would sign in with your library card or with some ID. I guess post pandemic, when we reopen, you will ask people to make appointments so we can keep everybody COVID safe. We have a collection of books and journals, all with some association with our area in North Somerset. So it starts with a collection, a collection of Somerset journals. Uh, the first one is the Proceedings of the Somerset Archaeological and Natural History Society. That ranges from 1851 to the present day, although I think they're now going virtual. We also have Somerset and Dorset Notes and Queries and the Somerset Record Society series of publications. So general stuff that will cover our area and the rest of Somerset. The next section is religion. So we have churches, histories, um, as well as strange religions like the abode of love, which has connections to the Smythe Piggott family in Weston. Census information, although now, of course, with free access to Ancestry in the library, you can get the sort of census information you use for family history online. And while the pandemic's on, you can also get free access to Ancestry from home with your library card. Moving on to council information, we've got the electoral registers from, I think it's about after the war for Western and when we became Avon for the rest of North Somerset uh, and up to 2000 they're quite good for finding out who lived in your house. Um, not so good if you want to find where somebody lived, uh, although we do have people who trawl through the different wards finding people. Council information continues. with bylaws, minute books. And then we have Law Armed Forces and Health. So if you want histories of the light infantry or the police, you'd be looking in this area. Uh, this book was inspiration for a talk from one of our researchers. People that come often are looking for information on old schools and we also get school parties that come so they would be interested in anything we've got on schools and we do in our cuttings files have some schools information it's a matter of luck whether it happens to be your school or not but again I suppose that's the emphasis is western rather than the, the main towns of Nailsey, Portishead, Clevedon all have their own local studies collection in their libraries. local transport, so we have information on planes, trains and boats. Um, it's quite exciting to imagine in the 20s there was a plane every 20 minutes going across to Tardiff. And of course tramways are now coming back.
We are doing this tour partly to celebrate hidden nature in the Heritage Open Doors 25th year. Um, and some of the collection is on nature. So we have journals of the Bristol Speleological Society, or rather the Caving Society, um, as well as very early lists of flora and fauna, say of Clevedon and Weston, as well as more up-to-date volumes on things like moths and beetles and birds. Sequence continues, more planning and conservation, and then we have arts, so architecture, artists, Doris Hatt. There's been a recent exhibition on the Clevedon artist, theatre programmes. And there's sports. And our local authors collection is one of the areas where, because we've run out of space, some of that is installed. So we've collected things written by local authors, uh, written about the area, as well as things uh, written with no association to the area, but by somebody who's local. So You'll see things in store include some of Geoffrey Archer's books and more of Arthur Eddington's. Now continues with 90, the number for archaeology. So although we've got some set archaeological proceedings, in here we have Banwell Search and the Avon Archaeology. Proceedings. And then we move on to early guides to places in the area. So here we've got Clevedon guides. And Western. And the earliest one from Western, I think, is 1844 which looks like it would be useful for family history. If we have a look at this, you can see why it might be of interest to family historians. As you can see, it lists the gentry and tradesmen and where they live. And also has a name index. We have holidays guides for Western, so useful for people who are researching when they visited, adverts for old hotels. We have general Somerset guides, guides to smiling Somerset, which pre-74 would have included North Somerset. And then we have a whole sequence, the main histories of the different villages and towns of the area. So these are arranged in parish order and for each parish in Somerset, back in the 1980s, they produced what we call parish packs. So for each parish, they brought together the early doomsday entry, the earliest maps, excerpts from the earliest maps and the excerpts from the Kelly's directories. You can look at, see those on the other side of this bay of books. So this is where you'll find a lot of the research 
into people who died or were involved in the world wars, as well as general histories of towns and villages. Then there are general histories of Somerset, including very early, I think these would be 18th century Collinsons. Moving on, we come back to the map. We have information on piers. Before we come on to Series of old phone directories and yellow pages, which people research into, and more general directories. So, I suppose the 1844 directory should really be on this side. Kelly's directories of Somerset, sometimes with Bristol, sometimes with Gloucestershire as well. Directories which are great for house history and family history, so from 19, oh, 1910 up to 1974. directory will show, laid out by street, who lives or who occupies as the tradesperson of places in Western. So great stuff. This is an example of the 1911 directory of Western that's in badly need of repair or digitisation. Similarly, parish registers. We have parish registers for our area on microfiche. So you can check all the indexing that has been done and looking at the actual original handwriting. Um, but the Western and District Family History Society have done a lot of indexing and we have got collections of their first booklets where they indexed particular church, churches, births, marriages and deaths. And now I think they've gone online and we have got a um, memory stick. You can search for the different parishes for your names also got here things like index to cemeteries and we have got a, a cemetery index for Western. Also in this area we've got some of the Brian Austin collection. He has done an immense amount of research and given us the results. We also got um, his collection of Western family trees. Next to it, we have got something that she really shouldn't be here in terms of the collection because it's related to Chew Magna, which is over the border in Bath and North East Somerset. But this is some of the things that have been left by Frederick Wood, who the room is named after. And he was a Victorian who promised to leave all his large collection, his large library, to what it would be the town at that point if they promised to build a library. So he was instrumental in getting the library in the boulevard built. The other thing that we have of his is in the cabinets over here. His 13 volumes of Somerset churches where he's collected loads of images of churches in Somerset. Also in this cabinet, various oversize and in odd things like scrapbooks, people have compiled about the area. And we have this 1933 Redishes of Owners. There, things in Western. These filing cabinets here that contain our cuttings files. So the one at the end has Brian Austin's family trees. 
are people's files, amalgamated cuttings uh, and information from the old library and also from the museum. So there are files for the Olympic swimmer, Raddy, Radin, Paolo Radmanovic, Marconi, as well as less known people and commemorating visits. So this is Haile Selassie visiting Western. So sometimes you can be lucky in finding information about your family in here. The rest of the cuttings files can be a mixture of newspaper cuttings on different topics uh, and photographs that survived. And we've used a lot of the photographs in our Memory Shared project where we have tablets with photographs from around North Somerset to inspire people to reminisce. We have a large postcard collection, over a thousand postcards. A lot of them have a seaside theme and have been scanned for us by Sally Turner, so we can display them. I forgot to mention that we have got aerial photographs, although we signed more of those online now, we have got a series of aerial photographs, I think. This is three of them. Going back to our maps collection, we have folded maps, old and recent, and we have hanging files of maps. The most interesting one is perhaps in this cabinet where we've got early plans of Somerset, uh, geological maps, some enclosure maps, shopping centre map, a gold map of Western from the 60s and the early Somerset Coast at the time of the Spanish Armada. We have ordnance survey maps in the cabinets. Most of the ordnance survey maps you'll find now quite easily on Know Your Place. So that will have the 19, well, 2020 version of the ordnance survey maps and then perhaps the uh, 1940s maps. But we will have old maps that cover the times in between on different scales. Uh, we've also got quite a lot of microfiche of maps and card index that helps you find. So to know your place, you can just put in your location and it'll tell you where you are. But in terms of the paper maps, often you need to work out which map you need so we have indexes for those. Rolled maps with behind the door here. But some of these are the tithe maps that are now available on Know Your Place. We've kept some of them because they actually have annotations that you won't find on the thing, the maps that have been digitized. In addition to having them on CD, we do have the tithe apportionments that gives information on interpretation on tithe maps. So you can look at those on our film readers. And that gives you information on who owns the land and what it was used for. So in terms of hidden nature, for the ecologists, it's quite interesting to know whether it was an orchard uh, and what the land use was. Of information. Part of the collection is the newspapers. We've got microfilm of the newspapers, so in Western Mercury from 1855 up to about on film to 2011, and Cleveland Mercury from 1863 to 
to when it closed with a gap in the 1950s, 1950 to 1970. These are on a microfilm, and I think the British newspaper archive, the paid for service online, you can look at the Mercury from 1870 to 1910. So if you want most of the 19th, most of the 20th century, you need to look at the microfilms. Uh, so you take one of these films and use a reader here. So this can look at various formats, but... So we have newspapers on microfilm and in the cuttings file we've got cuttings from them and staff have got access to indexing of topics on the newspapers. So those of you who are used to in the past reading Mendip Law or Roundabout with items about the area, they can locate the, where they are in the newspapers from the index. Um, the index also has a people's file so you can look up names and see if they have been indexed in the newspapers of Western. So that's the end of our mini tour. I'm sorry that you aren't here to see it in person, but we do welcome everybody to come and browse and research. Remember, we've got a wealth of maps, newspaper cuttings, images, postcards, and books and journals about the area. Um, and if you're interested in family history, the society is very active and can help you find resources. If you're interested in the history of the thing, then we have the archivist that comes up quarterly, bringing material that's in the archives there, you know. So, Remember us, come as soon as you can when we come out of lockdown.